Okay, hi, hi, how are you? So let's talk about the 100. I love the 100 and I also hate it. How that makes sense, don't really know. Before we get started, I wanna talk about an app with you guys and this app is called Amino. I've talked about Amino a couple times on my channel before, but if you have no clue what Amino is, I will let you know. I like to describe Amino as an all-in-one social media app where you can communicate with any community you're in. You can do so many things on Amino. You can make blog posts, quizzes, wiki entries, polls, normal posts, anything you want, and connect with fans all over the world. So if you're wanting to get more involved in the 100 fandom, I definitely recommend go checking out this app because it honestly just submerges you straight into the 100 fandom with fans. You guys all love the same thing and honestly it helped me a lot by catching up because I I'm kind of slacking when it comes to the 100 fandom, so yeah, it's a winner to me. One of their more recent features on the app is actually the live tab. So on the live tab, you can actually see real life people doing things in real time. So you can see how many people are on the like post, on the chat rooms, in the poll center, and hang out with them there. And Amino doesn't just stop with the 100 Amino. They have tons and tons of Aminos for any fandom you're in. If you'd like to follow me on Amino, my Amino is at T Cod level. I will link to it in the description box down below as well as a link to download this app um, for Androids and iPhone users. So definitely go check out this app. It's really amazing. I love Amino so much. Thank you, Amino, for sponsoring this video. Y'all are great. So, um, yeah, I fucked up because I thought the first half of season five was finished because i figured oh it's probably 20 episodes there's gonna be a 5a and a 5b well turns out i was in fact uh incorrect and you know they're still airing episodes so i basically talk about this season or these past 10 episodes like it's all from basically like a 5a point of view so if you're wondering why i'm concluding it like the season's over uh that's why so yeah um my bad i'm uneducated but anyways let's continue on the review of the first 10 episodes of season five not 5a i don't even know if this season is split up in two but i thought it was when i was filming this so yeah <laughs> enjoy my idiot behavior I watched 100 since season one. I followed it for a very long time. I kind of go in and out of like whether I'm being like hardcore stan or like just a chillax stan. And right now I'm like in between. Uh, but I thought I'd do a recap slash review of the first 10 episodes, not 5A. 5A isn't a thing, at least to my knowledge, or at least it's not over yet. You know? Anyways, let's go back. It took me a little bit of time to watch all of season 5A because I was following along for like the first three episodes and so, so I was watching them like right when they came out and then like all of a sudden I stopped for like a month and then I finally just caught up over these past like couple days and let me tell you season 5A was a hot damn mess. Obviously I'm not gonna be able to touch on every single little thing that happened but I'm gonna try to cover a majority of it and kind of the main plot uh, and specific arcs that I wanted to talk about. The season was interesting. You mean the first 10 episodes? I thoroughly enjoyed watching it, but I do have some issues with it. I feel like there was a lot of parts that kind of fell through and kind of were annoying as a viewer, frustrating as a viewer, and overall like almost like not really plot holes, but just kind of like, why was that necessary? I think one of the biggest pet peeves of mine was this in this season was that no one was listening to Clark. And I know you're probably thinking, well, Clark's been the leader or like since day one, like, yeah, she should shut up, whatever. But it would make sense that you would listen to her because she survived out there in the open, like all that radiation, like she survived. And like, no one fucking listened to her. No one was on her side. Her or Maddie, they were just all against her for like a very long time and it's like, Bitch, what the fuck? You were under the ground. I don't understand why you wouldn't listen to her. Like, like that was like my number one thing. Like from like the first like the first couple episodes, I was like, why the fuck aren't they listening to Clark? Like, why wouldn't you even try to listen to her? Like she's the 
only one that knows this earth and you guys are all like fuck it like we're the leaders of this town now bitch i could not stand octavia this season and i feel like everyone felt that way honestly when she was doing her whole red queen thing like i thought that was really cool but throughout this season it was like bitch find a new word than wan crew i'm sick of you saying you were either Wan Crew or the enemy of Wan Crew. I thought that episode was so cool when she was fighting and saying that over and over again. And then it just kept coming back in every single episode. And I was like, you know what? I'm like kind of done with that. And I don't really want to hear that saying anymore. Because it's really annoying. But she was one crazy ass bitch. She was absolutely insane. I'm going to kind of jump all the way to like the finale and what she did. I was so like just frustrated because she made the dumbest decision ever. She like radiates dumb bitch energy in the finale. Like literally a stupid ass bitch. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? We all know that she's on this weird power trip, power high. She's very into having that power. She always wants to go to fucking war, and I'm like, we got a little peacemaker, Monty, right here, giving you choices. We got Bellamy and Clark giving you another choice. And you're like, fuck those choices. Let's just go to war to go to war. Like, is that what Lincoln would have wanted? I don't think so. <laughs> Three choices. She could either go to war, she could either surrender and keep the land that they were on, or she could have just stayed there and not have anything to do with the prisoners and the shallow, shallow valley, shadow valley, whatever it's called, and stick to their algae form and, you know, make their own civilization over there on their side and just keep it, you know, Everyone just stays in their own lane. And she was like, fuck it, let's go to war, bitch. <laughs> and then, so frustrating when she's like, my brother poisoned me. How rude. And then she's like, all three of you, Inja, Bellamy, you, all, you guys have to fight to the death because you're traitors. And then she's like, hey, Bellamy, I don't want you to die. So I like, hear some tips and tricks here's some life hacks for you in the battle why don't you just call it off if you don't want him to die and like three people told her that and she was like no and like monty's telling her all this stuff he told her about the algae farm he told her not to put bellamy into battle if she didn't want him to die and then monty also kept calling her a dictator and she was like stop calling me a dictator i'm like well bitch you're acting like a dictator maybe you should look up the definition of a dictator because that's pretty much you right now so like i don't know if you know english maybe there's some Wan crew language that translates to dictator because that would be you bitch so talk like a duck walk like a duck you are a duck like i had one episode where i thought octavia was like pretty dang cool and it was anything that when she was in the bunker i was like dang like she's really out here like doing that and then like she got out and like was fucking insane and the relationship with her and bellamy this season was very tough to see because honestly like they both care about each other a lot and we have all these moments i thought when they reunited was so sweet and i wanted to cry because i was just like my heart's like really breaking right now like it's really aching and i just i loved that scene so much and then after that like it it really like octavia was just being very annoying in my opinion and like in some ways i get it in some ways i don't it's a very conflicting sort of are you an enemy are you not are you an enemy are you not sort of situation happening right there so i was just kind of like really like taken aback and then when she burns down monty's algae farm i was like that's it bitch you're over you're canceled in my book because like Monty worked so hard and I love Monty so much. He was the only one with a goddamn brain cell in this show and you burned down his hard work. That's a bitch move and I don't like that. And I actually did, I really liked Bellamy and how he kind of handled the situations that he was in and how, you know, he was telling all these people that they need to sacrifice blah, 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 but he wasn't willing to sacrifice his own sister to for the greater good i guess and then he finally like did it 
and you know took one for the team and you know did all that. So I think that was a very big tell in his character and character development because he was kind of getting called out a lot. And I feel like Monty's another character that really does call people out on their bullshit. So, you know, they're like, oh, we can't let any more innocent people die. And he's like, what about all the people in Mount Weather? Or was it Octavia that said that? I can't remember. I loved Murphy this season. I, I loved his whole character development and all of that. It's been a very long process, which I enjoyed throughout the seasons because a lot of times when shows do character development, they like to do it very quick and they like to like just have a change of heart within like a one to two episode like ratio to just be like hey we hate you hey we love you but for murphy it's been a long process of truly like waiting to see if he was a good guy or a bad guy and he would do nice things and he would do not do nice things he'd run away he'd stay and it was it was all really weird and now I feel like he's finally at a point where it's like I love his development and I l like his character a lot. But you still had that sort of like wishy-washy space when like in the first episode like on in the spaceship where he's kind of like <laughs> isolated. Um, so yeah, he's always gonna be that weird character that you don't really know what side he's on and where his morals kind of lie and all that stuff. I'm a very big Murphy and Raven shipper. I I have been since season like four. I just, I love their chemistry, whether that be friendship, whether that be romantic, like I love their scenes together. I think that they just have a very good dynamic to them in their scenes. So even when they were just up in the spaceship, just the two of them, I really liked that. And when they were getting like tortured or whatever, and they were kind of like asking each other if they're okay, like I really like that relationship they have. Whether it's romantic or not, I just love them. If they, if it's a friendship, I also love that. I just like the the two characters' interactions with each other. I thought it was really sweet when Murphy was like, we gotta save Raven, like she's in there, like we gotta save her, and I was like, yes, you do. I don't know, I just feel like whether they'll say it or not, them two characters, they really do care for each other, and I'm here for it. I, I was all right with Clark. I didn't love her, I didn't like hate her or anything. I'm kind of tired of always bringing it back to Lexa. I loved Lexa. I loved Clark and Lexa. I don't know, like, I think the 100 fandom is kind of getting tired of that, of it always coming back to Lexa. So it makes sense why they did it, because that's why she doesn't want Maddie to become the commander, because the person that she loved, Lexa, died from being commander. I didn't fall apart when they mentioned Lexa. I, th I feel like I've kind of gotten over it. Like, it's been a while since she died, so I feel like I'm pretty like over it but uh the whole new thing with like raven and the pilot forgot his name i'm sorry that whole thing like i was i was kind of here for it i think it's kind of a ship or whatever they kind of had this like enemy friend of me friendship ally relationship that was like very conflicting and it was like Hey, like, I'm gonna stab you, but then I'm gonna put a band-aid on it. But I'm gonna take the band-aid away. Oh, but here it is. Oh, but, but, like, 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 it was like, it's just like a lot that was going on. One thing happened, and I'm just so, um, Zeke and Raven kissed, and that is amazing, and I'm here for this ship. I really needed that to, like, boost up my mood. So, yeah. Um, they're amazing. Let's continue on with this review that's not that good, but it's okay. Um, what's her name? Dioza? Dioza. Is that her name? I don't know. She's the, she was the main villain this season, uh, her and the prisoners. It was interesting because it was a villain, but then it was all, it was truly like a white colonizer thing that happened. But it was like a white colonizer taking over some white land, so that was owned by Clark, which she is a white person, so it was just kind of like, what are you gonna do? Like, that's just white on white crime. So I don't really have anything to say on white on white crime. I think I was underwhelmed 
by the villain arc thing. I think the point of them was trying to make Octavia more of a villain than Dioza because even though Dioza was technically the main villain, it kind of shifted over to Octavia because it wasn't like Octavia was doing anything to really help. She was kind of becoming her own enemy in a sense, uh, which is also what happened to Dioza and her baby daddy. Forgot his name as well. I don't know, I just know he's Dioza's baby daddy. That's all I know. Uh, I really liked it when Murphy and Amori finally got to uh, Raven and Echo and the pilot forgot his name. I'm really sorry. I keep forgetting names. Whenever they finally get there and they start making this plan and like Murphy kind of has this like fuck it I'll do it myself type of energy and I was like kind of here for it because it was so like Murphy fashion and Murphy was like fuck it I'll just do it like whatever. He just like goes over like they're like playing this whole thing and then he just like walks away and like stirs up some drama. He just stirs up a little mess and he's just like bye. Whenever like it was like Dioza and then Baby Daddy's army like they were like head to head and they were just like talking and like fighting about you know like the cure or whatever and Murphy just is behind one of them and just chucks a rock and then starts the fighting and I was like you are a little shit but that is amazing I really loved that because <laughs> he was just like once again I gotta do everything myself <sighs> Dioza being pregnant was like what the fuck like what it what does that do for us right now what what does that information do for us right now? I want to see where that heads because right now I was kind of like, what the fuck does this have to do with anything? It really didn't change that much for me other than her baby daddy didn't kill her because of the baby inside of her that is his. Uh, so that happened. Other than that, I was like, please tell me more and how is this gonna do anything, you know? Obviously it's gonna come back, but for this part of the season, I was like, what did we need to know with that information? I think they could have made that whole pregnant like scene a little bit better if it was like her and her baby daddy like fighting and then she reveals it to not only her baby daddy but also to us that she is pregnant. It would have been it would have been more dramatic in my opinion because it would have been like da, 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 and it's like Ugh. this whole thing between Octavia, Clark, and Bellamy and all of that, it was it was conflicting and it was just like, what's going on? Like, I don't really understand what's going on, but like, okay, like it's fine. As much as I do want Balark to happen, I'm a, I've, I've been a Balark stan since like season one, as has many people, and Klexa happening didn't really shift my views on Balark. I feel like they still have really good like on-screen on chemistry. Uh, Bob and Eliza have really good chemistry on screen. You know, I'm just waiting for it to become canon at this point. Uh, I also liked Clark having someone that she cared about so much that she's truly never cared about before like this. Uh, it's like her own child, which I thought was a really interesting plot to bring in because like she has had people that she cared about a lot, but nothing to this extent of like, this like almost like a mother or maternal instinct that she now has. I think it's a very interesting plot to bring in. And also kind of how she has this whole thing with Bellamy now, which is like Bellamy, like you have to protect her. If I'm not here to protect her, you have to protect her. I, I really liked that. Like, actually, you know what? Something did happen this season when Octavia was talking to Bellamy or something about something. I forgot context, but then she was like, oh, the one you love. And I was like, Oh my god, gasp. She really just exposed him to his face. She was like, I got you. So that was that was a moment. That was probably the one moment of the season where I was like about Balark specifically. Like that was the part where I was like, Ugh. wow, like <laughs> Echo, like why is that a, why is that a thing between Bellamy and Echo? Like, why? Like what the what the fuck does that have to do with anything other than making Octavia upset, which she would have already she she has so many other reasons to be upset at Bellamy and you can get her mad at Bellamy in like two seconds. Why is why is it necessary to have him with Echo? I don't fucking understand that. Like, like what's the deal? I know it was supposed to create a rift between Octavia and Bellamy, but like the rifts could have been made other ways, you know what I'm saying? Like why is it necessary for them to be there? Like what what does it do other than just 
um, annoy me because that's all it does is annoy me that they're together. What the fuck is the point of that? Because I don't. I don't get it. Honestly, it's kind of disrespectful that they would even do that. Because I feel like they're just pushing this thing that I'm not trying to make everything about Blark, whatever, but it honestly feels like they're just trying to do that to be like, oh, well, like Bellamy and Clark can't get together. He's hooking up with the old sound effect Echo. Echo. It's honestly like hit after hit, season after season, it's just an L for us, Blark stands. And I just am tired. Getting through those 10 episodes was a little bit tiring because I'm like, what have I done to suffer through this idiotic behavior? You guys are all stupid. Not one single character on that show has any sense. None of it. And I, I don't have anything to say about Maddie. She's a, she's a child. Great. Love it. Love the whole thing. Her and Clark. It's... It's great. She, she idolizes Octavia. Whoop de doo. Oh, and Jaha finally died. He was like a cockroach. And he finally died. From a gunshot. Of all things to be from a gunshot. He literally just like floated around in space with a crack in his helmet. Like whoop de doo. Came down to earth. Like traveled the fucking deserts. He dies from a gunshot? That was lazy on the writer's part. At least make him die in an interesting way. Dying from a gunshot is honestly kind of embarrassing after you survive just like whoop de doing around space with a fake baby. Could you try a little harder on Jaha's death? God, he's been here for so long. And you just, you kill him like that. My goodness. Disrespectful. Not saying that Jaha is my favorite character, but come on, he survived so much. To kill him like that is just, uh-uh. It was like a, it was like a A minus or B for me. You know, like it wasn't bad, but it also wasn't super incredible. So that's why I'm more excited for the second half of season five, because I think it's gonna be way better. Cause everything in 5A was basically setting up for 5B. Everything was just basically catching us up on what happened in the last six years. And then also setting everything up for bigger better plots not to say that i'm like the decider of what's good and what's not this is just my opinion on what i think about this season and my thoughts on like character arcs and certain things that happened and all that stuff by all means i don't know anything but i like to talk about the shows i like and the hundred is one of them and if I like a show, I'm also gonna call it out when it's not to its best potential. So anyways, I know this was a mess and this was like awful. And you're probably like, Trin, you don't know anything about this show. Why are you so opinionated on it? Well, that's just what I like doing. So yeah, I know this was sucky. I know you probably don't want to hear it from me, but here I am giving my opinion where it's not wanted what else is new? I hope you guys liked this. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts on The 100 Season 5A in the comment section down below because I did not cover nearly as many things that happened this season. So leave your comments. Let's discuss this season and all of that. If you would like to, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at tkalevel or add me on Snapchat at tklevel. For leaving, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and let me know any other shows or things you would like me to react to in the comment section down below. Now I gotta go edit this and post it, so bye. Bye, bye. bye. bye.